Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Right after trying to give Trump a new nickname, Schumer got slammed in public with brutal truth. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer has finally resorted to name-calling. With little evidence to back his arguments, and more proof of hypocrisy revealed on The Daily, it's no surprise that Schumer is grasping at straws. The president is pointing fingers. He blames Majority Leader Mitch McConnell Archi, for obstruction. He blames the Democrats for obstruction. He's the obstructionist-in-chief because he can't stick to a position. Schumer told reporters during a pen and pad briefing on Wednesday. Obstructionist in chief is a bold claim coming from someone who has done everything in his power to stop real health care reform. That also includes the other name he mentioned, Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, Archie. How can President Trump get on board with a deal that is specifically designed to reinforce Obamacare? That's exactly what President Trump has been fighting so hard to abolish. As expected. Democrats praised a deal that would provide two years of health insurance cost-sharing reduction payments in exchange for giving states more flexibility on Obamacare guidelines. But if you didn't believe Schumer was a flip-flopper before, the Senate minority leader was soon caught red-handed as a hypocrite. According to the Washington Examiner, Schumer believes that Democrats should actually give up on future Obamacare talks. So which one is it? President Trump has been straightforward regarding his plans for health care reform. The only opinions being changed back and forth are the Dems, and that simply makes them more untrustworthy. If Schumer and friends would stop doing the exact thing they're accusing President Trump of doing, maybe some real progress would actually be achieved. If you want Schumer and his fellow Dems to sit down so Trump can do his job, let us know and share this so our nation knows the truth. Sources. WashingtonExaminer.comTheHill.com No more lies the American people just exposed the one thing Trump needs to destroy crooked media. Since the earliest stages of his campaign trail, President Trump has held the media to a higher standard than any president before him. He's demanded truthful, unbiased, evidence-based reporting that paints a clear picture for all Americans. This has clearly been an uphill battle, but now there's hard proof that President Trump isn't fighting alone. According to a poll by Politico and Morning Consult, nearly half of all voters believe the news fabricates stories about President Trump. That's right, over 46 percent believe that not only do major news organizations fabricate stories about President Trump but also the entirety of his administration. To prove this fact even further, studies show that of that 46 percent, only 76 percent were Republican, with the remaining split between Democrat and assorted parties. If anything, this shows how far the crooked media has gone to create their tired propaganda. Even those who don't fully support President Trump, still support an honest and transparent press. As mentioned above, Trump has been arguing this point since the start. Actually, dishonesty in the media is one of the things that surprised me the most, Trump told Sirius XM radio host Chris Plant Tuesday. I thought after I won, the media would become much more stable and much more honest. They've gone crazy. CNN is a joke. NBC is a total joke. You watch what they report, it bears no relationship to what I'm doing. But the media is absolutely dishonest, and frankly, I've never seen anything quite like it. In reality, this is an unbelievable phenomenon that has slowed down legitimate growth for this country and even threatened national security. President Trump just recently threatened to revoke NBC's broadcasting license after running a story that claimed Trump wanted to increase our nation's nuclear weapons stockpile tenfold. The White House and Department of Defense immediately denied the story with President Trump tweeting that it was pure fiction, made up to demean. But with many cases involving the shady press, the damage was already done. The good news is, the American people are obviously no longer in the dark. 
We see what's happening and demand a change. If you think this country deserves a fair and just free press, show your support by standing with our Commander-in-Chief. Share this massive victory with the world and keep up the good work. Sources, DailyCaller.com We are a nation of citizens, not a nation of immigrants, Bannon gave Lib's epic beatdown. Democrats and some misguided Republicans like Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina have been talking up how we supposedly need illegal immigrants to have a pathway to legal status and even citizenship. President Donald Trump's former White House chief strategist Steve Bannon, however, sees through these half-baked ideas. He was recently documented in the new book Bannon. Always the Rebel by Keith Koffler telling it straight why it's a lie that Americans are better off with more immigrants. Detailed Koffler, Bannon says, we're a nation of citizens, we're not a nation of immigrants, correcting what he believes is a common misperception. So now we have to start to act like citizens come first. All policy should be oriented to making the working people in this country and the middle class in this country have a better shot at success. And we've gotten away from that. What we've done is brought in huge global competition for their jobs, for their schools. Bannon went on to point out how the mass influx of legal and illegal immigrants makes for huge profits for corporations and their CEOs at American citizens' expense. Koffler explained, the low-skill, low-wage, non-English speaking people entering the United States from Mexico are taking jobs from Americans, Bannon strongly believes. The people most affected by illegal alien labor, is the black working class and the Hispanic working class, he said. Go into the inner city. That's why they're not paying a guy 12 bucks or 13 bucks to flip burgers at McDonald's. Because they don't have to. They get all the labor they want. Koffler added, Bannon seeks not just to end illegal immigration, but he wants to vastly curb legal immigration and reduce the number of refugees the United States takes. Until we have the black working class and the Hispanic working class getting high-value added jobs, we've failed as a society. To me, citizens first. And we don't need a million immigrants in this country. Particularly, we don't need a million immigrants that don't come with a real set of skills. Do you agree with Steve Bannon? With only a two-word announcement Sarah Sanders just made every reporter gasp. God bless Sarah Sanders. The White House doesn't have a recording of Trump's call to the widow of slain U.S. soldier, according to White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders. Sanders then cited what Sarah Sanders said that Chief of Staff John Kelly was in the room when Trump told the widow of Army Sergeant Law David Johnson that he knew what he signed up for. No, she said when asked if there is a recording. But there were several people in the room from the administration on the call, including Kelly, she said. That means that Trump was right. Sanders then recently put out a thing saying that Kelly supported Trump's comments. General Kelly was present for the call and thought it was completely appropriate. He thought the call was respectful and he thought that the president did the best job he could under those circumstances to offer condolences on the part of the country, she said. Trump then denied Wilson's characterization of the call. Count on Jones Johnson. Sanders then called the controversy a disgrace of the media and called her accusations simply appalling. After media attacks General Kelly's dead son, Sarah Sanders unleashes furious tirade. Earlier this week, Donald Trump celebrated his efforts to contact the family members of fallen soldiers. As always, the left quickly went on the attack. Florida Representative Frederica Wilson claimed that Donald Trump told the wife of a dead solitaire that her husband knew what he signed up for, as if he deserved what he got. Then, talk began to spread about General Kelly's son who died in combat. Some tried to use that death to disprove Trump's claims that previous presidents didn't sufficiently reach out to grieving families. At Wednesday's press briefing, 
Sarah Sanders attacked the media for politicizing these fallen soldiers. I think that General Kelly is disgusted by the way that this has been politicized and that the focus has become on the process and not the fact that American lives were lost, Sanders said. I think he's disgusted and frustrated by that. If he has any anger, it's towards that. Her own disgust is pretty evident. Attacking a president is one thing, but she will not allow the media to attack and use families who have lost sons and daughters in combat. One again, Sanders is putting the press in their place. Comment Go Sarah. And share if you love Sanders and our military. Both have committed their lives to the United States of America. Jeff Sessions just pulled out this paper on Senate floor and made Al Franken shiver in fear. Jeff Sessions is a dog. A dog that doesn't bark much but bites back hard. He got put on the firing line today during a congressional hearing that brought out two huge points. Sessions has done a wonderful job fighting crime, but he has not done much else. He then said that Rod Rosenstein is going to be held responsible as to whether he will oversee the recuse himself. It seems that the swamp is deep, deep, deep and Trump is fighting it alone. He is going to need our help in the coming months. We need to fix our government and we cannot rely on Jeff Sessions to necessarily get anything done. We need to vote in a new government. Share this if you agree. Jeff Sessions just dropped a bomb at a Senate hearing. Is Comey going to jail? The administration's firing of James Comey ignited a firestorm of controversy earlier this year, but they may know more about the situation than they're admitting publicly. During a Senate hearing on Wednesday, Attorney General Jeff Sessions claimed that there may be devastating evidence yet to be revealed about Comey. I don't think it's been fully understood the significance of the error that Mr. Comey made on the Clinton matter, Sessions told Sean Feinstein. I don't think I've heard of a situation in which a major case in which Department of Justice prosecutors were involved in an investigation that the investigative agency announces the closure of the investigation. Particularly, we were concerned that he had reaffirmed that he would do it again, Sessions added. This revelation comes just as the FBI confirmed that Comey drafted Hillary Clinton's exoneration letter before Clinton was interviewed by the Bureau. These back-to-back -back statements look grim for Comey. And his situation might get a lot worse now that the Attorney General is testifying on the matter. Has he concluded Comey broke the law? We may soon find out. Comment Lock him up. And share if you support our Attorney General. He's fighting the swamp one criminal at a time.